Yes, I'm Kombama. Good to see you here tonight. Are you alive and well? Amen. I'd like to talk for a little while about leadership in the 21st century. Being a leader in the church. Let's start in Ephesians chapter 4. And we will read verse 11 and verse 12. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. それは生徒たちを整えて奉仕の技をさせ、キリストの体を立てさせ。Now, verse 11 speaks of top five types of leaders in the church. この11節において、教会における5種類のリーダーに関して語っています。What we typically think of as a minister of the gospel. 私たちがよく福音のミニスターという人々です。The apostles were those who were sent with a commission. There were the original 12 apostles. And the church was founded uh, upon their ministry. They were eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. And as such, there can be no replacement for them. However, other people in the New Testament are also called apostles. Such as Barnabas and Silas and so forth. And so I believe that ministry still exists today. It seems to be related to those who are pioneer missionaries, those who are leaders uh, in the church. And then there are prophets. Well, in one sense, everyone who preaches under anointing is speaking prophecy. But in a more specific sense, God raises up some leaders who are spokesmen to the church. They are preachers of preachers. And they cast vision for the church. And then some are evangelists. And that means their ministry focuses on winning the lost. And it doesn't necessarily mean a traveling preacher. But it means a, a, a preacher whose primary focus is preaching the gospel to the lost. And then there are pastors or shepherds who are overseers in the local congregations. And teachers or instructors in the church. And the wording here, some pastors and teachers 
indicates this office can be an overlap. The same person can be both a pastor and a teacher. そしてこの牧師と教師というところなんですが、ある人は牧師であり教師であるそのように両方の働きを兼ねる。So, I think all of us here, our ministry fits in one or more, one or more of these categories. It may change over time. But this is the,、uh, the full time or preaching ministry of the church. Now, notice the purpose in verse 12. Some people think there are three jobs of these ministers. But there's really one job. This verse is unfolding in its、uh, application. その12節によってそれらを説明しています。So、these ministers, these leaders are to equip the saints for the work of ministry. これらの教育者、これらの説教者たちは生徒たちの、生徒たちを整えて奉仕の技をさせます。These five types of leaders are not supposed to do all the work of ministry. この5種類の働きをする教育者たちが全ての働きをするわけでありますで彼らは信者を力づけ整えていきます、so、that all the believers can do the work of ministry. そして信者たちがその神の働きをしていくことができるようにしていきます Or, in other words, in 教会において奉仕をすることができるように整えます And when everyone has their place of service, そして全ての人々がその奉仕の場所が与えられるときこのキリストの体が築き立て上げられていきます、so、ですからこの3つ書かれている3つが説教者に対する仕事ではなくそうではなく説教者が人々をに訓練をしていきます so、そして教会の人々が訓練をしていきます教会の働きをすることができる、so、that the church can grow. そして教会が成長するようにと。So、we need to see our job as trainers and coaches. ですから、私たちは私たちの働きがそれは訓練を与える、またコーチをするものというように見るべきです。We're not supposed to do all the work of the church. 私たちが教会のすべての働きをすべきではありません。But we're supposed to inspire and motivate. 私たちが人々に勇気を与え、そしてそのことを促していく。We're supposed to encourage and train. 人々を励まし、そして訓練を与えていく必要がある。So that everyone can work together. そして全ての人々が共に働いていくことができるようにしなければいけません。Sometimes, as preachers, we think we're supposed to do all the work. 時に説教者は私たちが全てをしなければいけないと思います。But that's not true. ですけれども、それは事実であります。We are responsible for all the work. もちろん私たちはすべての働きに関して責任があります。But we need to involve as many people as possible. ですけれども、できる限り多くの人を働きに携えていくことが必要です。For instance, if one pastor tries to do all the work of pastoring, 例えば、一人の牧師がすべての牧会の仕事をするならば、Then he can perhaps lead 100 people. おそらく100人,の100人ぐらいの人しか導くことはできません。But if the pastor trains others to help him, ですけれども、牧師が他の人々に訓練を与えるならば、Then there's no limit to how large the church can grow. 教会がどれぐらい成長できるか、その限界がありません。Now, I'm just going to take a few minutes to share some of these principles of leadership. And they'll all fit together, I hope. So, my second point is found in Matthew chapter 20. The disciples of Jesus were quarreling over who. Would have the greatest positions of leadership. So, Jesus used this as an opportunity to teach them about true leadership. Matthew chapter 20, verse 
beginning at verse 25. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. そこでイエスは彼らを呼び寄せて言われたあなた方の知っている通り違法人の支配者はその民を治めまた偉い人たちはその民の上に権力を振るっている Yet it shall not be so among you but whoever desires to become great among you let him be your servant あなた方の間ではそう,そうであってはならないかえってあなた方の間で偉くなりたいと思う者は使える人となり And whoever desires to be first among you let him be your slave あなた方の間で頭になりたいと思う人はしもべとならねばならない Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So here we find the principle of leadership through service. ここでリーダーシップ、奉仕、使えることによってリーダーシップ。の働きをしていくということがわかります。Now we can learn some good management principles、uh, from studying、uh, secular sources。いろいろなですね、世の中のマネジメント管理に関して読みあることを学ぶことができます。But we must remember that leadership in the church is different from leadership in the world。ですけれども、教会におけるリーダーシップは世の中におけるリーダーシップとは異なります。In the world, people strive for higher and higher positions。世の中においては人々は高い地位に高い地位にと争ってそして競っていきます。もっといい肩書きが欲しい。人々に対してもっと権威を持ちたい。そしてそしてそして権威を持ちたい。そしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそしてそ A true leader desires to serve. So, if you grow higher, so to speak, in leadership, that means you have a greater responsibility to serve more people. It's good to desire to be a leader in the kingdom of God. If God has called you, then it's good to desire to be a leader. But not so that you can become great. Not be, to become famous. Or to make more money. But the desire for leadership should, should be that I can serve people more effectively. ですけれども、リーダーシップへの願いというものは、もっと私は人々に効果的に使えていきたいというものです。In the church, there is spiritual authority. 教会において、霊的な権威というものがあります。But we do not lead by insisting on our authority. ですけれども、私たちはその権威に頼って人を導くことはできます。We lead by serving. 私たちは使えることによって導いていきます。ある牧師たちはこのことを理解しています。人々に教えようとして。彼は私が牧師だ。だから私が言うことはあなたはしない。Like、あなたがそれを好むがこのままいい。それを理解しようがし,し,し,し,し,しなくても。Disobey me, you're in rebellion. あなたが私に従わないならばあなたは反逆して。And you go to, you'll go to hell. そしてあなたは地獄へ。So、you need to do what I say. だから私が言うことをしなさい。Well, they misunderstand their position. これらの人々は自分の地位を混乱しています。Yes, there is a time to say, I'm the pastor and here is my advice. I want you to follow. もちろん、えー、私がこの教会の牧師でこれがアドバイスだからそれに従いなさいという時があります。But true authority is not established by claiming it repeatedly. ですけれども本当の権威というものはそのことを強調何回も繰り返すことによって、えー、人々に説得することであります。True authority is established by service. 実際に本当の権威というものは使えることによって確立されていきます。So、ですから私が誰かが祈っていて、それを受けるのに祈っていくなら。I've trained them as a new convert. そしてそのことをこ訓練していくなら。I've counseled them when they're struggling in their marriage. 
I visit them in the hospital and pray when they're sick. When they're having trouble with their kids, I counsel their kids. Then, then because I've served them, they trust me. They know I love them. They know I've invested many hours in helping them. So then when I say, as a pastor, I'm appealing to you to do such a something. They'll accept my words. Because they trust me. They followed my advice before. And I've helped them. And, and they know I, my desire is simply to help them. And so they'll follow that leadership. So we lead by serving. Let's also read from 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. Beginning in verse 1. The elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Now notice here we're talking to pastors. In verse 1 they're called elders. In verse 2 they're shepherding the flock or they're serving as the pastor of the flock. And also in verse uh, 2, they're serving as the overseers, or uh, the, another word for that is the bishop. In the New Testament church, these three terms are used interchangeably. The elder, pastor, and bishop. And once again in verse 3, we're not supposed to be dictators. But examples. So here we find, uh, as I said before, leaders who are servants and also leadership by example. You cannot lead people further than you have gone yourself. If you want your people to pray, you must pray. If you want them to be sensitive to God, you must be sensitive to God. If you want them to worship, if you want them to win souls, if you want them to respect authority, if you want them to pay tithes, you must do all these things. If they tell, if, if you tell the people to obey your authority, they need to see that you are also subject to authority. 
If you want the people to cooperate with you and come to church faithfully and so on, they need to see that you cooperate with other ministers and you're faithful in attending、uh, the things that ministers are supposed to attend. We lead by example. And then also, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 13. This is a powerful、uh, chapter that speaks about love. ここ And if, if you just simply take a look at this chapter, it says no matter what spiritual gifts you have, if you don't have love, you're nothing. And it doesn't matter how hard you work or how much you sacrifice. If you don't do it in love, it profits nothing. And then the chapter describes what true love is like. And we must understand the only proper motivation for working for God is love. We must always speak the truth. But Ephesians 4 15 says, speak the truth in love. There's, there's a time to preach against sin. There's a time to talk to someone and warn them of their wrongdoing. But make sure you're always doing it in love. There's a time to preach about hell and judgment. But make sure you do it with tears. Not with condemnation. So the principle here is leadership through love. If you love people, they will know it. And if you love people, they will follow you. If you don't have love, your efforts are going to be wasted. Even if what you're saying is absolutely true, if it's not in love, it's not going to work. Now, believe it or not, sometimes preachers get angry at the foolish things that the saints do. And sometimes we have what we call righteous indignation. So we speak words of anger. But we say, after all, I have a right to be angry. After all, Jesus got angry and chased the money changers out of the temple. So it's okay to be angry. Well, I, I agree that anger itself is not a sin. But it can become very close to sin. It can open the door to sin. And it can be very destructive. Now, it's normal to get angry. But use that anger as a force to do something positive. Don't use anger to strike someone verbally or physically. And notice in James chapter 1, verse 20. And always remember this. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Remember, when you get angry, 
and you just let that anger go, event, you know, uh, let it express itself, it's probably not going to have the effect you want. It's not going to build up the kingdom of God. Here's what can happen to a preacher. There are 100 people in the church. 99 of them are doing great. But one comes in with a rebellious spirit. And they're doing wrong. And they know it. So the temptation is to get in the pulpit and preach against that one person. I'm going to straighten them out today. Well, you're probably not going to help that one person. If they're in rebellion, and you get angry at them, that's not probably not going to help them stop being rebellious. In the meantime, 99 other people get hurt by what you say. So bite your tongue and preach a message of faith and love and hope if you need to warn against sin that's good but at the same time offer hope for deliverance and don't change your message because of one problem person or this is another temptation for a preacher you're praying and getting ready for your message you come in the church somebody catches you I need to talk to you right now brother so and so said this horrible thing against me uh, sister so and so I saw her doing something wrong this person is singing in the choir but do you know what they're doing and I oh we'll have to talk about that later now I have to go to the pulpit and preach a message of faith so I learned I need to keep that 30 minutes before church free of counseling You'll have to meet me after church. I've got to focus on the service. Because the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. We've got to keep that in mind. We cannot do the work. Only God can do the work. And we must project the love of God. Another principle I will give you is respect for people. Respect them as human beings. Treat them as you would like to be treated yourself. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. That's true of preachers. How would you like for the pastor to treat you? That's the way you should treat other people. I've met some pastors that are so strict. They're so hard. They want their people to get approval for everything they do. And I thought that pastor would not sit under himself. In other words, he would not follow a pastor that strict. 
際にそのようにこう牧師に厳しく使えることはできない。He has a, such a strong personality, I know he would not follow somebody else like that. 彼自身も非常に強い性格をしているので、他の人にそのように従っていくことはない。Don't be that kind of a leader. どうぞそのようなリーダーにならないでください。Be the kind of leader you would like to follow. あなたが従いたいと願うようなリーダーになってください。And then other people will like to follow you. そうするならば他の人々はあなたに従いたいと思います。It's common sense. もちろんこれは常識です。Respect people. 人々を尊敬する。Love people. 人々を愛すること。I've seen outstanding preachers who are not good pastors. And I've seen pastors of great churches who are not used as special speakers. そして大きな教会を牧会している牧師が優れた説教を必ずしもするのではないということに気づきました。なぜでしょうなぜならば良い牧師、これにとって一番大事なことは人々との関係を築くことです。Yes, preaching is important. もちろん説教は重要です。But most of your time pastoring is spent outside the pulpit. ですけれども、牧会においての大き,大,大きな仕事、多くの仕事は、講談以外で、Praying, praying with people. 人々と共に祈ること。Loving people. 人々を愛すること。Spending time with them. 人々と共に時を過ごす。Caring for them. 人々のことをケアすること。And that's how you build a church. そのようにして教会を建てていきます。That's how you become a good pastor and a good leader. そのようにして良い牧師、良いリーダーになります。And let me remind you that as a leader, you must rely on the word of God as your source of authority. リーダーとしてあなたは御言葉がすべての権威の源とみなさなければいけません。Don't try to force people to follow your personal opinions. どうぞあなたの個人的な意見に人々を従わせようとしないでください。But teach them to follow the word of God. ですけれども御言葉を教えてください。Now you can give personal advice. もちろん個人的なアドバイスをすることができます。But if they don't want to follow it, They're not in rebellion. ですけれども、あなたの個人的なアドバイスに従わなくても、それは人々は反逆しているのでありません。Give your advice and then let them choose. あなたがアドバイスをして人々に選ばせればいいです。But when it comes to the word of God, ですが、御言葉に関しては、It's not rebellion against you. それはあなたに対する反逆ではない。It's rebellion against God. それは神に対する反逆。So if it's your personal advice, you say, That's my personal advice. どうぞあなたは自分の個人的なアドバイスをするときこれは個人的なアドバイスだと言って If it's your personal preference, また個人的にこういったことを好む Then you explain that. そのことを説明すべきです And people will respect that. 人々はそのことを尊重します If you say,、uh, since you're seeing on the platform, I want you to have a certain presentation. That's my preference. そしてあなたは前の方に来て奉仕をするからこういう格好をしてほしい。People will respect that. They will cooperate. But if you say, if you don't do exactly like I say, you're going to hell, people won't understand that. If it's a matter of obeying God's word, you say, this is the word of God. I'm not telling you because this is what I think. I'm telling you because that's what the Word of God says. So your authority must be based on the Word of God, the Bible. Your source of authority is the Bible. あなたの、えー、権威の源は聖書です。And your source of power is the Holy Spirit. そしてあなたの力の源は聖霊です。So、don't think highly of yourself. ですから自分自身、えー、こう素晴らしいものだと思わないで You're just a servant of God. あなたは神のしもべにすぎません。And your authority comes from the Bible. そしてあなたの権威は聖書から Your power comes from the Spirit. そしてあなたの力は聖霊から来ます。When you understand that, you can be an effective leader. このことを理解するならば、効果的なリーダーになっていけます。Now, I'd like to talk a little bit more about influence. 影響に関して少し話をしたい。Our ability to be a leader is based on the influence we have with people. 
私たちがこうリーダーになるということそれは人々にどのような影響を及ぼしていくかということに関わっています。In, in church, 教会においてはボランティアの働きをする人々に頼っていく。Like、これは仕事とは会社とは違います。あなたはその会社の上司のようでありません。えー、もし会社の上司であるならばこれをしなければあなたを解雇するという。This, えー、あなたがこれをするならばあな,たをあなたの給与をあげよう。You a bonus. えー、ボーナスもあげます。We can't do that in the church very easily. So, how do we influence people? It's through our relationships. We have to build influence. Now, because of your position, you have a little bit of influence. But actually, you have to earn your influence. 実際にこう与えられていかなければいけない。時に新しい教会に行って牧師になったものは私が牧師だから人々は全て私が言うことをすると思います。Or maybe、uh, you're not the pastor, but the pastor appoints you to a leadership position. もしくはあなたは牧師ではなくても牧師があなたにこのリーダーシップ、このことをまとめてほしいと。そういう人たちは、私は牧師であなたにこのリーダーシップ、このことをまとめてほしいと。そういう人たちは、私は牧師であなたに。牧師が私を任命したから、so、ですから全ての人は私と協,調協力しなければいけない。だから人々にこれをあれをしてよと命令する。リーダーシップはそのようにうまくいきません。あなたは影響力を勝ち取っていかなければいけない。もちろん私は霊的な権威の原則を信じています。People are not going to obey you just because you have a position. ですけれども、実際の世界において、人々があなたがある地位や役職にあるからといって、あなたに従うわけであります。You have to build influence. 人々にこう影との影響力を築いていかなければいけません。Think of influence like money in the bank. どうぞその影響力を銀行に預金されたお金のように捉えてください。If you want to buy something very expensive, you've got to have enough money in the bank. あなたが高いものを買いたいならば、えー、預金にあるこう残高がなければいけません。ですから、引き出したお金よりも預金の方が多くなければいけません。毎日お金を費やしていくなら、大事なことを、大事なものを買うときにお金があります。But if you save your money and you don't spend it for every little thing, when you really need something, you'll have money to buy. That's like influence. If every day you say, I'm the pastor, I want you to do this. I'm the leader, so do this. Every decision you say, you have to accept my word because I'm the leader. そしてすべての、えー、こう意思決定をするとき、私がリーダーだからそれを、えー、受け入れてください。For a while, people say, okay. えー、しばらくの間、人々ははいと言うでしょう。You're the leader, I need to obey. あなたがリーダーだから私はあなたに But what you're doing is you're spending all your money. それはどういうことかというと、あなたのすべてのお金を使っているということです。And so one month from now, when there's a really important decision, 1ヶ月後に非常に重要な決定をしなければいけない。And you say, I'm the leader, do what I 私がリーダーだから私が言っていることをしなさい。People say, I'm tired of that. 私はもう疲れたと人々は I'm not following anymore. もうそれ以上従えない。When you really need it, you don't have it. あなたが本当に必要としているとき、それを持つことができる。You know, it's like、husband and wife. それは夫婦関係のようです。The husband is the leader of the family, right? もちろん、夫は家族のリーダーですよね。Let's say you're facing a big decision. 大きな決定事項があります。You pray together. 一緒に祈り。You talk together. 一緒に話し。You have different opinions. 意見が異なります。You try to make a good decision. そして良い決断を下して。Maybe finally the husband will say, Well, I really feel this is what we should do. そして夫は私はこうすべきだと感じる。And the wife says, okay. そして妻が、はい、わかりました。You're the leader of our family. あなたが家族のリーダーだ。I trust you. あなたを信頼して。Let's do it. やりましょう。That's okay. 大丈夫です。But what if every day the husband wakes up and says, 
Well, I know we've argued about this. ですけど毎日こう夫が私たちはこのことで口喧嘩をしたけど私は夫だから私が言うことはあなたたちにしなさい。最初は妻は分かったと。でも次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の日、次の妻はあなたは私のことを全く思ってないと。あなたが私にしてほしいことをそう言っていつもやらせる。でも私の言うことは全く言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。あなたは私のことを言ってくれてない。貯金していくことはそれだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。それだけです。何をしてるのあなたは影響力を築いていきます。And then if there comes a time, you say, I really need your help. そして本当に助けが必要と。I really need you to follow what I'm saying. 私本当にあなたが私が言うことにしたかったし。Say, okay. えというのであれば人々は、はい,と言いますあ。あなたはその影響力を引き出し、そしてそれを使,使います。So、ですから私たちのこのリーダーシップというのは私たちの影響力を超えていくことはできます。We very careful to keep building that influence. ですからその影響力を気づいていくことを非常に気をつけなければいけない。And then when we really need it, it will be available. そして本当に必要な時にそれを使うことができます。Now let me tell you this: in the church especially, 実際に教会において特に、the power to communicate is the power to lead. このコミュニケーションを持つその力が導く力。How do we motivate people? どのようにして人々に動機付けをするか。We cannot offer them a lot of rewards. 人々にこの報酬を捧げる、そのように言うことはできます。We have to communicate our vision. 私たちのビジョンを伝えなければいけません。So the people can see it for themselves. そして人々もそのビジョンを見ることができる。Then they will become excited. そして人々がそれにワクワクするよ。They will have the same commitment that you have. そしてあなたと同じように人々も決意していく。But you must communicate that. ですけれども、それらのことを、えー、本当に明確に、えー、伝えていかなければいけない。So uh, ですから、あなたのリーダーシップのためにあなたのビジョンを、えー、分かち合っていくと。When you preach or teach, えー、祈るとき、あ、ごめんなさい、えー、説教するとき、教えるとき。Or you send emails. イメールを送るとき。You constantly remind people of the goals. 人々にそのゴールを思い出させる。When you have good progress, you share the progress. あなたがこう本当にこ,うことがうまくいっているときにそのことを分かち合う。You share the victory reports. そして勝利の証を分かち合う。The testimonies. そして証をです。When things are not going well, you're honest with people. そしてことがうまくいってないとき人々に対して正直である私たちはこ,うこのゴールに従ってやってきたけれどうまくいかなかったでもこのようにやっていけば到達するとどうぞ偽りの報告をしないでくださいそうではなくすべての全体像を伝えてくださいそれを信仰を持って伝えていく。人々はあなたが正直であるならば、それを喜びます。あなたが彼らとそのようにこうコミュニケーションを持つことになる。ですからリーダーとしてさまざまなコミュニケーションの方法を取る必要があります。なぜならば、コミュニケーションを取る力というのが導く力だから。そのコミュニケーションを取る力というのが導く力だから。Because what is leadership? It means inspiring others with a vision. So they will adopt that vision as their own. そして人々もそのビジョンを自分のものとしていくそしてそのビジョンを実現させるために人々も協力する。
そのエビジョンをただ人々に手渡すことはできる。You're not just giving them orders. They start seeing it. They start believing it. They start adding to it. And then it becomes their vision. そしてそれが人々のビジョンになってきます。That's what a good leader does. ーーことをしていき Inspiring others with the vision. 他の人々にビジョンを持ってやる気にさせていく。So that they adopt it and mold it as their own vision. そして人々はそのビジョンを自分のものとして受け入れていくこと。A leader motivates others to go where they need to go. リーダーは人々が行かなければいけないところに行くように動機づけなければいけません。In order to fulfill the vision. そ,のえー、そのビジョンが成就するためです。So、not only does the leader cast the vision, ですから、ただリーダーはビジョンをただ語るだけではない。But he motivates others to do what they need to do to fulfill the vision. 人々が、えー、するべきことをしていくように、えー、人々に動機づけていかなければいけません。The leader doesn't do all the work to fulfill the vision. The leader motivates everyone to work together to fulfill the vision. It's the leadership of a team. You all work together. You all have a job. そして人々一人一人に仕事がある。Together, you fulfill the vision. ですけれども、共になってそのビジョンを実現することができる。So、as a leader, you must train others. ですから、リーダーとして他の人々に訓練を与えなければいけない。彼らに教えなければいけません。You must be a mentor to, to shape them or guide them. 彼らを形成し、成長させるために、えー、こう、えー There's one on one training where you're training another leader as you work together. Now, as your church grows, you have to spend more time developing leaders. This is where many pastors make a mistake. They try to give the same attention to everyone. And they try to meet every need. Now that sounds good. And when the church is very small, you can do it. But when the church grows, here's what happens. The most needy people will demand all of your time. So the person that has a strong marriage, they don't need your help this week. So the person has a strong spiritual life, they don't need your help this week. But the person that's in and out of church all the time, the person that's in financial trouble all the time, the, the marriage that they're always fighting every week, they want your help every week. Pastor, I need to talk to you. I need to meet with you. I know it's supper time, but I have an emergency. You need to come to my house right now. And so you run to and fro trying to meet all these needs. Now, this is, may sound bad, but let me explain what will happen. You spent all this time helping the most needy people. もう本当にこう必要、問題を抱えた人々を助けていくことにすべての時間がかかります。Anyway. 
そして多くの人々はそれでも勝利をして歩まず何時間も何時間もその結婚のためにカウンセリングをしてその後に離婚してしまう。You spend hour after hour after hour convincing him to serve God and come to church. And a month later, they backslide and they go off anyway. And then the good, faithful people, you're too busy to spend time with them. Because they're not going to backslide. They're not going to get a divorce. And so a month goes by and you don't spend time. And two months go by and you don't spend time. And they may still be faithful in church. But you're not developing them into leaders. So here's what you must do. You must spend less time with the very needy people. ですからそのように問題を抱えて必要がある人々との時間を費やす時間を少なくしてそしてあなたの時間の大半をリーダーを育成していくことに費やすこと Now, that doesn't mean we don't care about the most needy people. これは問題を抱えて必要を多く抱える人を無視するということではない。But think about this. このことを考えてください。When you train leaders, あなたがリーダーを育成する all of them can help you with the needy people. それらのリーダーたちが問題を抱えた人々を助けることができる。So a needy person comes says, Pastor, I need counseling for my marriage. ですから、問題を抱えた人が、牧師さん、私の結婚問題でどうぞカウンセリングをしてください。So I say, Okay, we'll meet one time. わかりましたじゃあ一回会いましょう。We'll pray. 祈ります。I'll give you some advice from the Bible. そして聖書からのアドバイスを与えます。And if you need more help, そしてそれ以上助けが必要。Well, I'll set you up with a leader in our church who is trained for marital counseling. この結婚のカウンセリングでトレーニングを受けたこの人を紹介します。I'll refer you to another leader in our church who's trained for financial counseling. そして経済的なこと問題に関してトレーニングを受けたこの教会のこの人を I can't spend all my time meeting every need. I need to put 80% of my time into leaders. And then they can help me with all the needs of the church. Well, when the church is small, you're just trying to win every soul you can. You'll do anything for anybody. As a pastor, I would help teenagers with their math homework. I would help people fix their car when it broke down. In the beginning, what do I have to do to get you to come to church? I'll do it. But as the church grows, you train other people to do all those things. You become the leader of a team. And you invest most of your time in your leaders. Now, I'd like to talk about one more thing tonight. And that is being accountable to others. Often we think the leader is at the very top. So he doesn't have to report to anybody. He does whatever he thinks. That's the wrong view of leadership. The higher you are in leadership, the more you should be accountable to other people. それだけもっと多くの人々に対して、えー、こう説明をする責任を負うんです。So、ですから、この、えー、説明責任に関して、Every one of us should be accountable in these seven areas. 私たちすべてのものがこの7つの分野において説明をする責任がある。First, we're accountable to God. まず、私たちは神に対して
We must build our personal relationship with God. We must pay attention to the basic spiritual disciplines. Prayer, worship, studying God's word, fasting, giving. We need to cultivate and develop our own relationship with God. We should not lead by what we want, but what God wants. And to do that, we must be in close communion with God. The higher you are in leadership, the, the, the fewer people will know your relationship with God. You have to make sure that you're maintaining that relationship. The second person that you need to be accountable to, and this may surprise you, but you must be accountable to yourself. You must be a good steward of your physical and mental health. Now, sometimes we have the idea, oh, uh, we're serving God, we need to sacrifice. And that's true. But at the same time, we have to be good stewards of ourselves. So sometimes we work all day, all night, day after day after day. And we neglect our health. We say, oh, I'm sacrificing for God. Well, that's good to a point. But if you do that too much, you'll die. Or you'll lose your health at an early age. And then you can't work for God. And so God can't use you like He wants. So you're not being a good steward. You're hindering the work of God. So we need to get exercise. We need to get rest. We need to have moderation in our diet. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to be good stewards. So as Pentecostals we say we don't smoke. We don't dream because we're good stewards of the body. Well, what about your diet? Your exercise? Your rest? Not only physical rest, but mental relaxation. Take a day off. Take a vacation with your family. In times past, people would boast, I never take a day off. I never take a vacation. Don't boast about that. That's condemnation. You're saying, I'm a bad steward. I'm abusing God's temple. I'm glad you have a sense of responsibility. To work hard. You should. But in moderation. Number three. You are accountable to your family. To your husband or wife and to your children. Before you're called to be a minister, you're called to be a Christian. This is a very important concept. If you're going to be a minister, you must first be a Christian. That's a revelation. So you must be a good husband. Or a good wife. 
If you have children, you must be a good father or mother for those, for, for those children. Now, sometimes the old view is, well, I'm sacrificing for God. So I can't spend time with my family. Because I'm doing the work of God. Do not separate the work of God from your family. Because part of the work of God is to be a spiritual leader of your family. If you work so hard to win souls but neglect your own family, and your family is lost, what good have you done? Now I know when children become adults, they're going to make their own decision in life. And even the best parents might have a child that goes a different direction. But it should not be because of our neglect. Spend time with your family. And husbands, listen to your wives. Now I have three children. They're all grown now. They're all in church. But my wife and I try to make sure we spend time with the family. And we were building a church. We're very busy. And then I travel a lot to preach. I've taken missions trips three or four a year for uh, almost 30 years. I've spent as much time on the mission field as some missionaries. <laughs> And then I became a district superintendent. And then I became the president of the Urshan Graduate School. And so sometimes my wife would say, you need to spend more time with the kids. So I learned over the years to listen to her. It was easy for me to argue and say, but I'm doing important things. I'm doing the work of God. And I think I'm spending enough time. But if she didn't think I was spending enough time. Then I was not spending enough time. Because if she felt it, it didn't matter the number of hours or days that I would count. What counted was the way she felt. So what we had to do is get out the calendar and we would set days in the calendar. As a pastor, I was a full time pastor. I set aside every Monday as my day off. Because Saturday and Sunday were work days. We set time to, to spend just my wife and me, or our family. Or with one or more of the children. We try to eat dinner together every night. Turn off the phone. What if there's an emergency? It can wait one more hour. Most emergencies are not true emergencies. <laughs> Oh, Pastor, I need you to come right now. 
We are fighting, my husband and wife, we're fighting together. Well, you've been fighting for five years. <laughs> you can wait one more day. So I would say, now promise me you won't kill each other. <laughs> If you can't keep that promise, one of you go to somebody else's house. <laughs> And I'll meet you tomorrow morning. <laughs> But I'm busy tonight. <laughs> And most of the time, we can do that. <laughs> you see, you set aside that time. <laughs> So I would put appointments in my calendar for my wife and my family. Someone calls, Pastor, I need to meet you tonight. Well, let me check my calendar. Well, I'm sorry, but I have another appointment at 7 p.m. So I can't meet you tonight. I didn't have to say it was an appointment with my wife. Because that's my priority. We must take time together. You must spend time. Children grow up so fast. If you say, well, next year I'll spend more time. Next year will be too late. You say, well, well, tell me, I, we, I've only got 30 minutes, let's have some good time. No, I want to go play. The only way to have quality time is you have to have quantity time. You have to spend enough time together that those precious moments will come naturally. My middle son always wanted more time with me. If I was going somewhere, he wanted to go with me. My older son, my daughter, they always wanted to go with mom. I remember one time we were coming to church for something and we had to go in two cars so my son said I want to go with you dad so I said come on he got in the car and he said dad now that we're alone you can tell me the truth <laughs> Nobody else will know this. <laughs> But I'm really your favorite kid, aren't I? <laughs> Now you cannot plan those times. <laughs> you just spend time together. <laughs> And those wonderful times will come. <laughs> so we're accountable. As my children became teenagers, I would talk to them. I'm sorry. When my children would grow up to be teenagers, I would talk to them. And I would say, Son, do you think I'm spending enough time with you? My oldest son, is, his personality is very similar to mine. So when we talk, we're always thinking the same thing. So just a few minutes is like spending a lot of time. So he said, Yes, Dad, I think we're, we're doing great. It's fine. But my second son said, No, Dad, I need more time with you. So we try to spend more time. You say, well, why would you let a child tell you what to do? Because that's my son. I'm accountable to my son. I'm accountable to God for my son. This will be my only chance with my son. I can't do it all over again in 10 years. I have to do it right the first time. I remember one time we had a sudden problem come up with one of our children. I had to fly overseas the next day. 
But I talked, my wife and I talked. And we decided this cannot wait another week. So I contacted the missionary. And said, I'm very, very sorry. I have to cancel. I already had someone preaching for the church. So I, I told my child, you know what? I'm not going to the trip. I'm not going to church. But you and your mom and me, we're going out of town and we're going to get in a motel and we're going to pray and talk until we get the answer. Because that was the most important thing. Let, let me move on. Fourth accountability. To your spiritual authority. You should have a pastor. And you should follow the leadership of your pastor. You should have teachers and mentors in your life. You should have someone in authority in your life who has the right to ask you, how are you doing? あなたどうしていますかということを聞くことそのことを許さなければいけます。What are you doing? あなたは今何をしていますか？Tell me about your prayer life. あなたの祈りの生活について話してください。Tell me about your ministry. あなたの神の働きに関して話してください。There should be someone in your life who can say, I think what you're doing is wrong. え、本当にあなたの人生において。or I'm worried about you. Or I have a word from the Lord for you. Or listen to my advice. And of course you have to evaluate and make your own decision. But there need to be these leaders in your life that have authority to speak into your life. The number five, spiritual peers, friends. Not only should you have people in authority over you, but you should have spiritual brothers and sisters that you can trust. They will pray for you. You will pray for them. If you need advice, you can talk to them. What would you do in my situation? If you're a pastor, it's wonderful to have a friend who is a pastor who can share your uh, your problems and your needs. And they also need to have the right to ask you how you're doing. They also need to have the right to say, I'm worried about what you're doing. I'm worried about the direction you're going. え、あなたが今やってること私は本当心配にも、あなたが言ってる道を私は非常にこう心配に思っているという権利があるんです。Of course these need to be people that you trust. もちろんこれらの人はあなたが信頼する人でなければいけない。They will keep confidence. そして彼らはあなたの秘密を漏らさない。There will be lifelong friends. You may say that's difficult to have. Yes, it is. But you need to develop those friendships. Don't be isolated. Sometimes leaders say, I have no one I can talk to. You need to develop relationships with people you can safely talk to. The number six, spiritual followers. Now this may surprise you. 
But we are accountable to the people who are working under us. We are partners on a team. We're not the dictator. Let me give you a simple example. I have an assistant in my office. She helps me with all of my work. And sometimes I'll write a letter dealing with the problem. And I'll say, I want you to send this to a certain person. But read it first. Make sure it sounds right. Tell me what you think. And sometimes she may say, Well, Brother Bernard, I know what you're trying to do. But I think this sentence might sound too harsh. Or I think the person might misunderstand what you're saying here. So she never tells me I'm wrong. But she finds a nice way to say maybe you should think about something else. I want the people working for me to think that way. I don't want to say, I'm always right, I'm the boss, you just do what I say. I want them to make me look good. I want them to help me out. When I was a pastor, I had an assistant pastor. I gave him the liberty to talk to me. If there's a problem in the church that I don't know about, tell me. If people misunderstand, are misunderstanding me, tell me. If I made a wrong decision, find a nice way to ask me if I really want to do that. Because we're working together. So I'm accountable to my followers. I read, one time I read a study of famous preachers who fell into sin. Sometimes it was adultery, sometimes it was a bad embezzlement of money. In every case, they talk to their assistants. And every time, the assistants were not surprised by the fall. In every case, the assistant said, We knew something was wrong. But we did not think we could talk to our leader. We did not think he would listen. So we didn't know what to do. We didn't do anything. And then later, everyone found out the sin of the leader. I don't want to be that kind of leader. I want the people working for me to be able to talk to me. Even if it's just a wrong perception. I want the, the, my assistant to say, I think you're, what you're, you're being perceived as wrong. What your actions are being viewed as maybe wrong. Because I want to correct any wrong impression. And then finally, we are accountable to the body of Christ. We need to communicate. We need to give an account. So even the general superintendent must give an account to the general board. 
Even the pastor must give account to his church board. Should give reports to the church body. I'm not saying they can, should control the preacher. I'm saying the leader should feel a responsibility to share information with the whole body. So then I could lead our then not every detail. But the people need to see how the business is being conducted. How the money is spent. How we're working together. Don't hide everything. Because then it seems you have something wrong to hide. But share important information. Because we're accountable to the body. So I leave you with these uh, seven areas of accountability. And if we will show ourselves to be accountable, that will build our credibility. That will build our influence. And people will want to follow our leadership. And then God will bless us. So I've given you a lot of things to think about. How we can be more effective leaders. And let me close with this. If you're not the pastor, these leadership principles still apply to you. Here's what I found. As a pastor, I need I try to treat the leaders under me in the way that I've just talked about. I didn't want to be a dictator, but I want to be a team leader. But then some of those same leaders would turn around to their little group and act like a little dictator. Yes. <laughs> some of those leaders would turn to their little group and act like the dictator of their little group. And I would have to tell them, I treat you with respect. I listen to your opinion. I support you in your area. You are a valuable member of the team. You need to treat your team the same way. The same style of leadership that you appreciate in me you need to exhibit to your followers so if you are the Sunday school superintendent or the youth pastor or whatever job you have you need to treat your followers with the same type of leadership these principles work for everyone. Every level in the body of Christ. Even the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul were accountable to the elders and apostles in Jerusalem. Paul even rebuked Peter when he was wrong. Every leader needs to be accountable. Every leader is also a follower. And as we work together, we will accomplish the work of the kingdom of God. So that's my thought for tonight. God bless you. Amen.
See you in the morning. Amen. Amen.